This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. I'll be filling in for Sean today. Uh, the performance division of Chinese automaker GAC claims it has developed the fastest spinning electric motor for EVs. HypeTech recently started production of what it calls the Quark Electric Drive that can spin up to 30,000 RPM, which beats out other top EV makers. Lucid has a motor that can go up to 20,000 RPM, and it looks like Tesla has a carbon-sleeved motor that's capable of over 23,000 RPM. HypeTech is also using a material called amorphous soft magnet to improve the efficiency of the motor. It says it's over 98% efficient and makes 13 kilowatts per kilogram. That means it could add 50 kilometers or 31 miles of range to an EV or 150 kilometers or 93 miles of range to an e-rev. The motor will first be used in HypeTech's own models. It currently has three cars on sale, but it did not say which of those models would be the first to get it. Not only is CATL the largest producer of batteries for EVs, now it's supplying the entire electric car chassis. Chinese automaker Nita is the first to use CATL's integrated intelligent chassis for its upcoming Nita S wagon. The 800-volt architecture features cell-to-chassis technology, as well as the battery, drivetrain, suspension, brakes, and steering. CATL claims the skateboard can provide up to 1,000 kilometers, or over 620 miles of range, and with only five minutes of charging, it can add 300 kilometers, or 186 miles of range. The battery maker also has deals to use the same chassis, with BAIC and VinFast. Many automakers are turning to LFP or lithium iron phosphate batteries, mainly because they're cheaper, but they actually degrade faster than other batteries. According to a study in the Journal of Electrochemical Society, LFP cells are harmed by repeated charging cycles at a higher state of charge. We're talking 75 to 100 percent. It says at those levels, the charging voltage is higher, which causes negative reactions to occur in the pack that deposit harmful compounds on the electrode and consume lithium. The conclusion is it's better not to repeatedly charge to a higher level and that if you leave your EV sitting for a long time, you should keep it at a lower state of charge to help extend the life of the battery. Keeping your heart racing in and out of the gym. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Potenza Sport AS tires with a 50,000 mile limited warranty. German automakers lobbied the EU to go easy on tariffs on Chinese EVs. And now automakers in the American market are asking the US government to back off a bit too. Ford, for example, wants lower tariffs on artificial graphite that's needed to make battery anodes. A lobbying group called Autos Drive America, whose members include every foreign automaker assembling vehicles in the U.S., want to prevent tariffs from going up on battery modules, battery cells, and critical materials that are imported from China. It's all about controlling costs. Legacy automakers are losing money on every EV they make, and they need to bring down the cost of making them, and right now, China has the lowest cost available. Even so, Canada is slapping higher tariffs on Chinese EVs, as well as Chinese aluminum and steel. Bloomberg reports Canada will put a 100% tariff on Chinese electrics and 25% tariffs on aluminum and steel. Canada's finance minister, Christia Freeland, says Canada's auto industry is, and I'm quoting here, facing unfair competition from China's intentional, state-directed policy of overcapacity. China, of course, has not taken this sitting down. It's threatening retaliation, starting with a 25% tariff on imported ICE cars with engines larger than 2.5 liters. That would directly threaten the premium German automakers who exported over a billion dollars worth of ICE vehicles to China last year. But China's not only threatening autos, it's also talking about raising tariffs 
on European cheese, milk, and cream, which would directly hit farmers, and farmers tend to have outsized political clout in almost every country in the world. A fire broke out in a parking lot where Rivian stores vehicles outside of its assembly plant in Illinois. The fire damaged many of Rivian's EVs, though it did not say how many. And this is just a reminder that problems with battery fires are far from being resolved. So South Korea is going to implement a battery certification program in October, which is sooner than automakers were expecting. Earlier this month, a fire in an electric Mercedes-Benz in an underground parking lot in South Korea took eight hours to put out. It destroyed or damaged 140 other cars, and it forced people in the apartment building above the parking lot to evacuate the building. The new regs will force automakers to reveal who made the batteries in their EVs, as well as require sprinklers near charging stations and expand the use of chargers that prevent overcharging. Ford's cashing in on the off-road craze in the American market by expanding the model range of the Bronco Sport. It's adding the Sasquatch off-road package to the Badlands and Outer Banks models. This includes a steel skid plate, a brush guard, 29-inch Goodyear all-terrain tires, a twin-clutch rear drive unit and locking differential, Bilstein shocks, and different springs that provide more suspension travel. For hardcore off-roading, it has what Ford calls its GOAT, or Go Over Any Terrain Mode, that holds gears longer, provides sharper throttle response, and more feedback through the steering wheel, and it also offers one-pedal driving where the brakes engage as you back off the throttle. To help drivers see where they're going, there's a 360-degree camera view on the center screen that shows the tire overlays, and you can choose a split-screen view that uses cameras mounted on the mirrors to see exactly how the front tires are positioned. The center screen is now 13.2 inches, complemented by a 12.3-inch gauge cluster. The overhead console features toggle switches, and there's a list of accessories that will be available, including bumper mounts for sand dune flags. The only thing we don't know about the Bronco Sport Sasquatch right now is how much it's going to cost. That info will not be available until the first quarter of next year, which is when it goes on sale. And that brings us to the end of today's show. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. And thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. MEDC, where Michigan businesses are powering the future of mobility. And by Tajan Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. When we did our research for the talent that we need for this program, Michigan was really the top of the list. In order to be successful in this space, you really have to have the right people, the right mindset, the right environment. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, lighten up. But with world-class composite material, Tajin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi for compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software-defined vehicles.